Hello, I thought I'd give another update on my boring mill. I've been managing to uh, keep working on it between other jobs that have been in my shop and uh, another job in my shop just finished, so I'm taking a couple days to work on the saddle. I believe that's the name for this. Um, I've been cleaning it. I spent most of yesterday cleaning it with uh, a degreaser and just rinsing it. So I've got a bit of uh, flash rusting on the ways. I'm not too worried about that. That'll wipe off pretty easy. Um, I have a couple more times. I'm going to I'm gonna scrub it a couple more times. There's a little bit of uh, dirt and grease left on it. But um, this thing was <laughs> like the rest of the machine was just absolutely filthy when I started. So... You have to wash it quite a bit to get it clean. Um, the um, after I'm done washing, uh, then I got to take the use the uh, oil manifold there. I'll take that apart. I've uh, I've already had one of those apart. They're full of uh, springs and plungers and little check valve parts, and I'm gonna take that all apart and wash it out and clean it and put it back together and then blow all the lines out. So I know that everything's getting oil. Um, the big hole in the middle is where a gearbox mounts. And that gearbox is right here. And like the rest of the machine, it's absolutely filthy. Um, this is an oil-filled gearbox, although it appears that it's got grease in it. Um, unless that's just 50-year-old oil that's uh, become really thick. but. Um, both the, both the shafts turn, they're like silky smooth. It's just a loose key in there that you can hear ticking. Um, so I think the bearings are in good shape, but I'm going to take, I'm going to strip this thing right down, take the bearings and shafts, knock these seals out. I bought some new ones and I'll, uh, wash the bearings and gears. Uh, this actually, this bronze one on well, the inside is, is a lead screw see there so I'll wash all that out and put it back together and then I have no idea like you can like the rest of the machine you can see aluminum swarf all over I got no idea how it would have got down on this machine this gearbox is completely covered either by the table or um, way covers uh, I, I think they must have ran this machine with the way covers off and then put them back on when they sold it to the guy who had it before me but uh, anyways um, it'll get cleaned and hopefully it'll stay clean when I use it and then this here is the uh, one shot oil pump that actually feeds oil into the manifold I just showed there earlier there's a tank cast into the um, uh, saddle and uh, this forms the bottom of the tank so when you pump it it sucks oil here goes around down out through the bottom through a bulkhead fitting and then across that bolts on that whole piece bolts on here this is the bottom of the tank and that copper pipe feeds in here and just comes through and feeds over to the manifold and then actually passes some of the oil passes right through the manifold to this plastic pipe which uh, I have to replace, it was kinked. Um, and then that actually comes over to the cross slide and attaches here. And then that feeds this whole part on the cross slide through another manifold. This has all been cleaned already. Um, I uh, disassembled this. There's actually a few number of components in each barrel there. And I washed them and put it back together. So this is all clean and ready to go. Uh, you can see the lead screw nut there. Um, so that's oiled. The ways are oiled. The rotary table is oiled. The center bearing in the rotary table is oiled. Um, and it's all oiled by this filthy pump. So again, all this will be cleaned and filled with new oil when I'm done. Um, in the previous video, I had mentioned that I thought these ways may have been re-scraped at some time. And I found some more evidence to, to back that up. Yesterday when I was washing this, I found this stamped on the way. And there's other numbers stamped on the various components. Uh, I believe it's the machine serial number. 
probably put on in the factory so they could keep the parts together. But they don't look like this one. And I take this one to be September 27th, 2001. And I suspect that uh, that's when this saddle was re-scraped and the person who re-scraped it put that date in. So I think it probably was redone. Um, but anyways, the ways, all the ways on this machine have a um, plastic way liner on them. When I first encountered that, it was when I took the head off the column. I thought maybe it was because it had been rebuilt at some point. Um, but Wotan put that on in the factory. I have some drawings in my owner's manual. You can actually see the plastic in some of the cross-section views of the ways. So I think that was installed new from the factory. Um, I've got one issue here. This stuff is glued on. And then they put a couple of screws. I'm not sure exactly why, but it's completely bonded to it. And I got one issue and that that's, you can see some of it's loosened. Now, don't think that's a big deal because that's gonna be compressed down when it sits on there. There's still glued here pretty good in there. There's four screws holding it. I don't think this thing is gonna slide in or out. What I am concerned about with this being loose is that stuff may have gotten behind the plastic while I was washing it. And if that's the case, then when I set this back on the machine, it's gonna hold the saddle up in the air and uh, create an alignment problem. Um, one thing I did to this before I took the saddle off, I'm glad I did, and it wasn't for this reason, but while it was sitting on the base, I actually um, put a dial indicator stand or height gauge on the bedways and I measured up to the bedway here in the four points and I just made one zero and then measured the other ones and compared and I think the worst was a two thou variation between the two corners. Um, now this bed is not has not been leveled and it most likely got a twist in it so it's probably doing this the saddle on the other hand is <clears throat> you know the length of those ways is not very long relative to how thick everything is and i don't think those ways would actually twist in their free state i think that would stay pretty rigid so if i was to sit that on a bed that's got a bit of twist um, that should give me variations from corner to corner uh, in, in uh, height difference. Um, now, the worst case was only about 2,000. If I put this back on now and remeasure that and find out that it hasn't gotten any worse, then I'd be pretty confident that nothing has gotten underneath that wayliner. Um, but what I really should do is after I get this leveled, redo those measurements and just see and assuming the wayliners you know stayed clean nothing got behind them uh, I can't imagine that the measurements would be any worse than the original ones I took um, so I'll do that check and what I'll do is I'll do that check before I actually put the keeper plates and the lead screws and everything in I'll just set it on do those measurements and see if necessary I'll take the apron off and Worst comes to worse, I'll just have to pry this wayliner off, wash it, and just set it back on with the screws and try it again. Um, yeah, it's too bad that that happened, but there's not a lot I can do at this point except just try that. Fortunately, you know, if the measurements come out and they're good, then I really have nothing to worry about. So, um, but anyways, that's uh, about it. I did clean up the, the bed. I've got it under plastic right now so it doesn't get wet while I'm washing this, but uh, it cleaned up pretty good. I managed to get the outriggers all cleaned out. I took a just about a wheelbarrow full of aluminum swarf out of both the outriggers. So anyways, this is where I am so far. I'm hoping maybe this week I'll get the apron back on the machine and then I can actually start rebuilding it. All the other parts 
that came off the apron are cleaned and bagged and, and ready to be reinstalled. So anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.